Scotty. Take it away, buddy. Taking it away. Here we are, back again. Another night of Friday Night Fly. Sorry if you were watching live or are watching live, and it took us a while to get back, but uh, we are in an open store, and it's busy. It's Friday. Super busy. Everybody wants to go fishing. Like stupid busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been fun, but the day's winding down. We're excited. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're, like I said, we're in an open store. We're at Spud Valley Sporting Goods, 1380 Birch Street in Pemberton. Stop on by and visit us anytime you like. Uh, great things to be had here. Uh, we're brought to you by Pemberton Fish Finder, uh, where we talk trout. And, uh, yeah, give us a call. We'll take you out fishing. Show you how it's done. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, the funny thing is, is, like, if you don't know you're wearing a mustache and sunglasses and whatever, when you wink, the actually like it emphasizes. Oh, you got the mustache on. <laughs> nice. I'm trying to keep it together here, but it's just not working. It, it, yeah, it kind of does that, like yeah, with it, it? it kind of winks with it. So I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> That's awesome. So, what do you got for us? So, today? Uh, yeah, and I'm Boulder. You're tired yeah. tonight, and uh, we're giving a little shout out to Scotty Holmes. That's uh, right. He's and not in tonight, so this will be the happy last. Happy birthday to his live. beautiful wife. It's Jennifer. Yeah, it's Jen's birthday, so happy birthday, Jen, from the Friday Night Flies crew. And uh, I know you're not nearly as old as Scotty Holmes, but uh, thank God. Yeah, thank God. So, what do you got for us tonight? Um, uh, yeah, I got a wiggle mayfly clinger. That's what I got. Uh, so the name came from. The bead. Here, let's we'll, go we'll go down and yeah. we'll, we'll show, I guess you you can show us what's what going on. So the wiggle comes from. Uh, we're gonna have to get where my little pointer went, so that we can see what went from this this nice uh, product that Scotty Holmes and everybody on Friday Night Fly has been playing with a lot in the last couple of days, which is the hairs wiggle dubbing. Pretty neat stuff. Hair ear dubbing with little fine rubber legs built right in, and then. Uh, can you see it? Do I need to tilt it? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, uh, that's not really working too much. Uh, if you, uh, try, yeah, just push it back a little bit and we'll just show people. Yeah, I'll do it on. like this because I don't have it set up on the rotor. There you go. There yeah, that shows it somewhat. So, uh, yeah, there's all a new series of tungsten beads that are out. It's have done you got by your bodkin or anything like that. You can point at the, yeah, just even with your bobbin would be fine. Yeah, either way. You can see, like, so, if you look at the back, you see the little two little so bumps on there. You got eyes. It's, it's flattened. Or I'm, flat like a uh, like the head of a nymph or uh, the mayfly nymph flat on the bottom. I guess stonefly nymphs would be kind of like that too. They, um, they must make there's a, there's a mayfly series. Yeah, there's, there's, so they got a mayfly and the stonefly series as well. Yep, I got a gold stonefly ah, one right here. So I'll put it on the on the bob in here. So oh, I was hoping it was going to work. So that's the shape of the. I mean, you can get as funky as you want with those too. You can paint the fly. eyes. You can do whatever you yeah. want to do, right? Well, nowadays I was watching a, a lot of things on YouTube, and there's a whole series of these realistic oh, yeah. bugs, and they look crazy good on the picture. And then I'm going to try and like, oh, I want to tie that up, and oh, it's all bits and pieces that they buy prefabricated. So the body's prefabricated, the legs are prefabricated. And you just like glue it to a hook, you, and off you, you go. You basically. <laughs> Yeah, really? Yeah. Oh my god. So that's... you put the bead head on and then there's a body that you slip on and you know you know you what? Fasten it there's down something and... for those people that's called spin fishing. Yeah. So, so it, yeah. it's more like a lure that you put together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, you know, like I don't know, there's a fly there's a lot of creativity with with fly tying nowadays. Um, and as I yap about it, we'll we'll carry on with tying this fly. You know what I'm going to say too here, Scotty. Uh, question and oh, answer question is answer. now open. There you officially go. Officially for the million in attendance. Tonight. So there you go. We got a good subject for you to type in uh, with your question and answers. When is when is it not a fly anymore? Yeah. When is it not a fly? You know, um, as much as I love using all these new materials, I I personally like to do a nice mix. So I really like the traditional stuff. I still like working with dubbing and hair's ears and, you know, uh, bucktails and stuff. But, yeah, there is a place for all this new crystal flash and UV and everything else. Um, but, yeah, but these new kind of piece it together flies, it's it's – it rubs me the wrong way a little bit. <laughs> you might as well be using freaking a spinner or a spoon or... You might as well just buy it made then. Yeah. You know, or go to yeah. the fly shop because you're not really fly tying anymore. But whatever. Uh, this is my personal view. Like I like playing around with this these new stuff a little bit. But um, 
I still think you need to be able to tie a little bit of natural product on there here and there. So we're starting off with the size 10 or size 12 this time. Size 12 yeah. nymph. I put the bead on there. You can see they, they do fit pretty loose. Um, so we got to really make sure that we get the back done up nice with uh, dubbing and stuff to keep it in place. Um, another thing, I don't have it with me, but when I was doing some of the bigger size ones, I would spurt uh, just a bit of the Loon UV resin right in here and then cure it to start it off. And that'll keep your bead in place while you tie. Um, I more had that difficulty with the larger stonefly ones. There's quite the cavity in the back half to get to fill up. Either way, you got your bead on. You're going to tie in with your thread. And we're just going back to where it starts to bend. Get rid of that trim. And we're going to build up our tail. So on this particular one, I've gone with bucktail as my, as my tail fibers. So I don't need the long ones. I save those for my okay, at least, yeah. for my bucktail go streamers, and I just take off some of well. these ones in the back here. You know? Yeah. Uh, you don't want a lot of them, so that's probably a little I much here. Now yeah. you're looking so that you have you little five, or, five or six. Yeah. Stretch it out a little bit, you know. There you go, nice little tail. And I'm going to make it the, the length. Of the ah, how come there's so many in that one? Length of the hook shank. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Hi guys. The <laughs> is all coming apart. Yeah, it is live as you can do. Oh, you're doing it live. Sorry. Your voice is now on the internet forever. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> okay, go, go back so, and watch it tonight. Uh, but shouldn't I get one of those expensive ones? Yes, should. A couple of them. And I'm saying something about those triple or whatever can't go in the. Okay, so, so no, so you're not going to we have yeah. our tail in. Next, we're going to tie in our ribbing. So I got some gold. Uh, the matter daddy. <coughs> some gold wire here. And now um, I'm going to just bring my thread back up to the front here. I'm going to trap it on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, this this guy tends to flip over, you know, so if he's on there. I'll just get one for my boy then, okay? You see, I got it tied onto the bottom. Next, we're going to build up our thorax. So I'm going to my dubbing. So I got some awesome possum here. Oh, you I thought you guys just set up that You guys just have to roll up and roll for yourselves. We did. All right. No, no. No, that's... After hours, close the doors, I'm sure. Great. Yeah. yeah, but no, this is luck. All right, so we're going to get this possum dubbing on. What about? You probably get hair everywhere, don't you? Little piece of all Everywhere. Okay. So we're going to build this little racks up. If my body doesn't look like it, it will ingest. <laughs> and so I'm leaving about the space the same as the, as the feed Thanks, sir. for my shell back which is going to go in and for that wiggle dubbing. But I'm going to build up a little bit of a thorax, a nice little paper in there. You see, I'm trying to get that, that back end to be about the same thickness as the bead. Hey, thank you for everything. So that's on there. Okay. And we're going to wrap our wire up. Okay, Philip has a question for us. He says, thank you for the sculpt and tie a few weeks ago. I've taken your recipe and it works great. I agree with you guys on the ultra realistic flies. I think they are lures. Nice. I like Philip more and more. Every day. <laughs> we like Philip more. But hey, we don't oppose people that uh, question it. Yeah, um, I they, guess. Obviously, there's a market for it or they wouldn't be making it, right? Yeah. That's the way I look at it. So 
for the people that enjoy using that kind of stuff and don't have the time to type and want it to look realistic, that's your stuff. Thanks for your uh, question there, Bill. You guys got mm, like rubber band tubing, six stuff? All right, so next one we're going to be doing is putting in our, our shell back, which is uh, this thin skin. So it comes in a big sheet. I've cut off a strip. I have some left over from another fly. And seeing that it is a little too thick, so I'm just going to trim down the side here a little bit. All right, and you see I've got it cut into a, a V, so that's going to help me get it tied in. So we are going to get that tip trapped. Make sure it's right on the top, and uh, I like folding it down around the fly so I don't get that crease. And we're going to tie it back to that nice hump that we created with our dubbing. And I spent a little good care doing this. I like it so it's when I pull it forward, it matches up real good. I'm liking the way that looks. And then uh, what we're going to do is go to this really neat wiggle dub. So you don't need too, too much of it. I'm going to dub it on. I'm trying to remember. Ah, this is what I did with it. So I made a little dubbing loop. I found it worked a lot better. It was uh, a little bit hard to try and actually dub on because of the rubber legs. I was losing a lot of the legs. So, put a little dubbing loop. How about your test? Get that material in there. Twist it up. And get it all wrapped in there, right behind the bead. So this is where you're going to, oh, sorry for the earthquakes there. Wrapped in there, nice and tight, especially up right behind that bead head. Why am I having this trouble? Tighten up my legs. There we go. Oh, I got it tightened in there so my bead's not moving anymore. It's not going nowhere. You can see how that wiggle hair automatically gives me some buggy legs. All right, so I'm going to trim all that off. I'm going to brush it down. Fold my thin skin up and over. Tie it right behind the bead a couple turns. And I'm going to make sure that I get all. I don't want any of that wiggle hair in front. I want a nice smooth transition. I trap the one and check. I might have to just nip that one off that's struggling, but say the bee. So a couple wine lines in behind. Now we're ready to do a little whip finish here. Yeah, the thread will tuck it in to bed too, which will help. Yeah, it's funny how you can, it really shows on the on the video because it magnifies like that flies tiny. Yeah. And on here it looks like it's about two and a half inches. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> cool how it magnifies it. So the last thing that we're gonna do is just create the little wing buds um, using this thin skin. So what I do is I'm folding it back in half on itself so that the crease is right in the middle of the fly and then just trim it on an angle with your scissors. So that's going to give you, and I'll reposition after, I don't know, can you see it? Yeah, no, it definitely okay. shows it. So you can see then you end up with the two little wings as well as having a little shell back underneath. So a little bit more life to the bug. And if some of these wiggle fibers are a little long, like these three, you just give them a little trim back. There you go. And uh, 
Move one of them to the other side. It kind of worked out perfect, this one. I got two on each side. But uh, that's your little mayfly clinger. So I fished this in the river, cast it down and across, or a dead drift across. Um, once it gets to the end of it, of the drift, let it swing across, and then let it rise up out of the rocks up to the surface. That's how they merge anyways. So um, the trout will often key into them on, on that after that swing when it's rising up. So yeah, give this a shot. Turn in a bunch of different shades. It's a great little nymph head. It's not, uh, still involves a lot of fly tying. It's not completely a lure yet, but uh, yeah, I thought they were neat. Thought I'd try them out and uh, thinking they're going to be good this summer. So we'll take you back upstairs and sign out. Oh, Brad's got it. So we're doing, we're doing multiple things at the same time today. We're a two man wrecking crew, you might say. There you go. There you so go. we're back up. So I'm, uh, I'm Boulder. Thanks for watching Friday Night Flies. Join us again next week, and uh, yeah, check out uh, facebook.com slash Friday Night Flies .com, or I guess it's just just search it in the Facebook. Search it in Facebook. We got on Facebook <laughs> now. Um, that's a good place for you to post your photos and any of your flies that you want to share with us. And uh, check out FridayNightFlies.com. You have great links through to Pemberton Fish Finder where we put all of our fishing reports. I think, Brad, you just did one couple days ago, actually. Yeah, it was um, fishing for the larger lakes. We shared a few helpful secrets, I guess yeah, you might so say. Yeah, so good resource for you guys. We're always here for you. And if you're in town, jump on into Spud Valley Sporting Goods. And other than that, I'm Boulder saying love the tug. Join us next week. Scotty Holmes will be back. Hopefully. Hopefully.